think we should get started in the interest of time and other people will trickle in slowly. Uh, I'll be chairing this uh, session. And the uh, uh, first talk is by Professor Andre Moskalenko from uh, KAIST, uh, close by. And the title of this talk is uh, Qubit Entanglement Generation by Classical Light Driving an Optical Cavity. Please. Yeah. So then, could you be in front of the TV because of the camera? Yeah. It can be my introduction. Yeah. So, uh, so topic of my talk, uh, I selected such way that uh, I actually tried to find something what I'm doing, which would, would be related to polaritons. And this is what basically maybe the most related stuff, even if it's maybe not really uh, like polaritons in 2D materials. Okay. So what uh, we are studying it. So we actually were interested uh, in general in uh, creating uh, such things like entanglement and uh, related systems and then actually to prop such uh, entanglement uh, on uh, ultra fast time scales. And uh, for the beginning, we uh, thought about some simple systems. Uh, and for example, one of the simplest systems, okay, the simplest system to study would be two qubits. So qubit A and B. And uh, typically, so you can couple them uh, by switching some interaction or modulating some interaction which exists between them. But imagine we have no interaction directly between these two qubits and we want to couple them somehow so we can put them uh, in an external cavity. And in that way, uh, the idea is we want uh, somehow to drive this cavity uh, and then to, to study how uh, the entanglement uh, in the system would look like. So we have a cavity mode. This cavity mode is in the resonance to the qubit for simplicity. So the most simple case uh, here. And we have some coupling between the cavity mode and the qubits, which determines our interaction frame. So then the Hamiltonian is the kind of variation of Davis uh, Cummings model, which, uh, in case if the coupling is uh, much less than the uh, frequency, we can write in the rotating wave approximation. And uh, when uh, uh, studying, so if imagine if you somehow um, ge generated a single excitation uh, in the cavity, so you have a cavity mode, and you bring uh, just exactly one photon, single photon state into this cavity, then you can couple uh, by weight Hamiltonian to the qubit and transfer the excitation obviously to the qubit. So if we have uh, two qubits, then uh, uh, we cannot transfer this excitation uh, to the qubit uh, uh, to the both of them at the same time because here we have just like a single quantum, but uh, we can, of course, can create a superposition of such states. So Hamiltonian would lead uh, uh, to creation of uh, a superposition of two excited uh, qubits. And then actually you see this direct product uh, between these two things. Obviously, what if we would now trace out uh, uh, our cavity mode, we would, uh, can get uh, an entangled state because this is one of the bell states. Okay, and then this Hamiltonian just provides a coupling uh, in this uh, subspace with a single photon. I have a question. Yeah. I think also if you have a relative phase with the two coupling, how do you know that you have a relative phase? The coupling is I. Relative phase uh, of the coupling. You can have two couplings, right? Yeah, they can be in principle different, but we consider that the phase uh, is the same. So uh, that means, uh, for example, if you have, yeah, the position should be selected such that you are in the same phase. So there is no phase difference. But in principle, you can study also variation of a model that they introduce. So experiment, like, for example, we have an experiment. How do we make sure that the phase is the same? So to make sure that the phase is the same, you have to be within a single wavelength, I think. So so if you have a single... I mean, in the same wavelength, not in that, because in one wavelength, the phase can be like out of too high, right? So you have to be close enough that you don't have this phase difference. So this is definitely can be realized. Um, there are several systems in which this is studied. So I mean, uh, in some particular systems, it might be a problem, but uh, the model is kind of uh, quite established in this way. So I don't think it's a big difference, to put, uh, a big problem to put two atoms uh, so that there uh, will be no phase. But the phase uh, can be interesting point by itself. So you can induce additional uh, nice physics by that. Okay, so you have coupling between this uh, subspace uh, 
of a Hamiltonian of you can go out by this uh, terms in the subsets. So in this case, actually, it's simple and analytical solution is possible. You see that you get uh, basically oscillating between uh, this unexcited states of the qubits and uh, this Bell state. So, and in result, you have uh, dynamics. If you calculate now characterized uh, the entanglement, you can use one of its measures and uh, the measure, an appropriate measure for mixed uh, states, which we get now after we trace uh, uh, the cavity mode. We can use a concurrence and uh, the maximum concurrence by one characterize fully entangled state and zero concurrence means unentangled. And so you here you get uh, by a single photon in your cavity, you get uh, such a dynamics of uh, entanglement in your system. So you have a typical time scale here, which is determined here by the coupling uh, to the qubits, and uh, the factor here depends on the uh, number of photons. In this case, uh, square root uh, for, for a single photon is the square root of two. Yeah, so that's our typical uh, entanglement time scale, which leads to the creation or the destruction of the entanglement uh, in the system. Now you can have more uh, quantum when uh, you couple when more states in, in, in the system. So you can exchange more these uh, photons uh, in a different way uh, between the cavity and uh, the qubit uh, subspace. So that you can also solve uh, analytically. We, that's one of the reasons why we believe in this model that we can get most of the results analytically. So we can get, for example, the dynamics of a concurrence fully analytically. You see that uh, increasing the number of uh, uh, initial number of potents in the cavity, uh, the two things happen. Firstly, the maximum entanglement uh, gets slower, so it follows up uh, this, uh, this dependence, like one of the number of potents in the cavity, cavity you pump, and actually also the uh, time scale becomes short and which entanglement uh, is created, uh, some degree of entanglement is created and then, uh, uh, and then disrupted. Yeah, so it's determined because the effective coupling strength in this oil determining the entanglement time scale is given by this expression that corresponds then to the period which we see here in these structures. Okay, so um, the idea which we said, okay, this is actually was already known in some papers, even uh, some analytical solutions were not found, but uh, people have studied this and have observed uh, this, uh, not an experiment. Uh, involve some experiments I also interested in that. Uh, so we, we were interested in idea. So what we can do, so okay, it's actually not so to pump uh, in this case, you, you need a quantum light. So, or you need, uh, there are some other versions how you can do it. You can bring uh, one of uh, atoms uh, out of the cavity, somehow pump this, uh, this uh, two level system, bring it back to the cavity. This is all kind of long also. So, and might be uh, less uh, efficient. So we are, uh, we're interested in the case. Um, so, what we, can we actually pump entanglement by pumping uh, a classical light? Can we, from outside to this cavity, can we create entanglement by classical light pumping this cavity? And can we do it actually on relatively short uh, time scales? So, this is uh, what we try to uh, address. Uh, so, we want to try. Uh, uh, to pump this cavity by classical light, and in this case, we have uh, additional interaction to, to this of, of the cavity to the classical light uh, from outside. So, under the assumption which was given that uh, the coupling strength, so actually, uh, yeah, under certain assumptions, with the duration of this uh, pumping is not too short, we can uh, uh, write the interaction between the uh, external pumping like and the cavity mode in this way, where this uh, X is just a displacement operator. And uh, the parameters here uh, in this Hamiltonian determine the strength of, uh, uh, of, of this coupling, basically uh, proportional to the external driving and the efficiency of the coupling between the outer, outer field and uh, the cavity mode. And then we have here the uh, profile of the short pulse uh, with uh, its uh, some envelope. Okay, and we have some characteristic uh, duration uh, uh, of this pulse, uh, which is very important to, for what we are doing. So we have to look closer to this duration to check also that uh, the assumptions of a model which we are doing are, are, are valid. 
So firstly, um, so we have to, to be sure that this uh, duration is actually not too short with respect to the inverse uh, carrier frequency of our, our of our light. When if it's too short, then actually this assumption that by external light we just drive a single frequency might be uh, so just drive this cavity at a single frequency might be questionable. So we should be relatively narrow band with this respect. So shouldn't be uh, too short with respect to this. On the other hand side. To apply the rotating wave approximation, we have to be uh, so we have to be longer than this, but we have to be shorter uh, when, when when this time scale, uh, which is determined by by the coupling. So somewhere in, in this case, so if one looks uh, to so uh, okay, this this regime we will call sub cycle or sub rabbit because the typical time scale of our pulse is shorter than this uh, oscillation period, which I have shown. Of concurrent. But it's for comparison in our regime when we can drive basically by quasi uh, quasi uh, static in quasi static case where we just have a periodic driving uh, of a long duration. We we also treat it for a comparison. Yeah, so the typical parameters here, if we take some experimental papers, of course, can be different realization. But if we took this paper, so this is typically like three femtosecond. 55 femtosecond, and of course, uh, the pulses you will be somewhere duration between this is available with the current uh, femtosecond uh, 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 lasers. Okay, so um, firstly, so since when, 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 it's, when we're driving so short, they can actually, uh, when the driving satisfies these conditions, we can actually uh, derive uh, its effect uh, more or less analytically. So we have a situation where before the excitation, we have a cavity mode and uh, in quantum optics, we can characterize it in the uh, phase space by just the vacuum state. And we have two qubits unexcited. So described by this state. So if we come uh, with this pulse, what we efficiently, effectively do, we just drive the cavity to some, uh, to some other state. And this we can do if the, uh, if the strength um, of, a, of a driving is not too, too, too high. In this case, we can solve it analytically. Actually, this condition is a little bit, it's kind of conservative. This falls from the Magnus expansion. Uh, we can be somewhat higher than that. So we don't necessarily need such a, a, a big driving can be somewhat strong. So what actually then happens in this case, we just uh, displace uh, uh, the cavity mode in the phase space uh, create, create a coherent state, uh, which is described by some amplitude, and this can be found uh, from a corresponding displacement of the rate, and the displacement of the rate is given by the area of uh, our uh, pulse envelope. So, uh, in fact, to find this uh, displacement, we can just solve the uh, Hamilton uh, classical Hamilton equation of motion if we are kind of uh, driving not too strong and satisfy uh, our conditions of, for our model. So we have uh, driven this uh, uh, this state, but of course, uh, during the driving, we have no we see no entanglement, and this entanglement is actually generated just uh, after the pulse. So. So we use some uh, parameters to simulate, simulate it. Oops. Yeah, so we have some initial time uh, moment uh, when uh, after the pulse, we bring it to a display state and uh, we describe it uh, uh, with this and see how it uh, evolves. And here you see the resulting uh, the dynamics of the entanglement, which is uh, created. Uh, so black one is exact uh, numerical simulation of this model and uh, uh, blue one is this analytical assumption when we assume that the pulse satisfies these conditions, which I mentioned, that it's short enough and also long enough and not too strong. So we, we you get uh, this uh, solution basically analytically. Yeah, you can select actually uh, somewhat stronger pulse. You see, this this actually parameters do not satisfy the condition. I written this is definitely larger than two pi. As I said, the conditions were somewhat conservative. In fact. Uh, you will see some other variation of that condition I will show uh, later. Uh, so this is actually still within the validity where we can use the approximation, even one starts to see some deviation. So we can use some stronger pulses and pop 
pump uh, the cavity to a stronger coherent state. Why it's interesting because uh, it's known if we have a strong coherent state, we basically have a classical heat. So and it's kind of uh, uh, interesting that uh, by having a classical kind of object, we can still generate uh, an entanglement by uh, interaction with that. And so in this case, you get a similar dynamics. Um, so entanglement, maximum entanglement is somewhat smaller, but uh, you see dynamics uh, becomes, we have this smooth part of the dynamics and we have some also quickly oscillating things uh, on, on top of it. The analytical solution in this case still of working, uh, although you start to see some uh, deviations. Yeah, so if we plot now uh, the maximum entanglement, which we uh, generate depending on the photo number, uh, in this case, for again, said on the average photo number, we see that we have here maximum around 0 0.8, and uh, then with uh, high and higher pumping, it somehow can actually here uh, converges to some finite value. And uh, if you compare it with uh, Fox state pumping, so when we just put uh, an exact number of photons uh, in, in, in the cavity, it's kind of uh, not uh, exactly clear why we have this behavior for the coherent state. So since for large photon number for Fox states, we get that the entanglement actually goes to zero. With for coherent state, we have here some convergence uh, to the value uh, one half. And this is kind of not completely clear why why it would happen like this, and maybe also uh, if we didn't solve, but how we can actually design in such a way we can get even higher entanglement in the case. Okay, so we wanted to more understand the structure of the entanglement for this cagetting state and its dynamics of which we looked more closely to the un underlying density matrix after we trace the state of the cavity and analyze uh, the particular elements of it uh, in, in, the, in, in the basis. So this is basically our calculation of basis for which uh, coupled by, by the exchanging of photon excitation between cavity and the photon. And this is some state uh, which doesn't satisfy symmetry condition permutation between the qubits because we have the symmetry. So that's why we have uh, the zero. So we have to look at these elements, and when we look at the dynamics of each of them separated to see what contributes uh, to the entanglement, here you see the dependence of all these elements, and when the so-called naive concurrence uh, in this plot, uh, when you increase the strength of the driving and correspondingly the strength of a given state in the, in, in the cavity. So it's kind of interesting uh, dynamics, which we see here, which contributes to this from all these elements, we see that Actually, to this smooth behavior here, uh, this plus psi plus state, uh, uh, for example, this plus psi plus web state doesn't contribute. Actually, as we see here, zero concurrence. It's actually uh, the concurrence comes from kind of coherences between these two states. Uh, maybe uh, my student had maybe also analyzed it in terms of two other bell states here, and also coherences between this bell state and trap space uh, constituted of, uh, of these two. So, so we see that we have this smooth uh, behavior, and on, on top of that, we actually, on top of this smooth behavior, we have something uh, which is called uh, collapses and revivals. So where basically the dynamics collapses to basically zero and then revives uh, again. Um, we just look at also in this, and this is kind of um, known phenomenon in um, quantum optics uh, considered by Eberly in the 80s, and it was shown and quite uh, well understood for a single for a single qubit uh, coupled to a, to a cavity. And one could see uh, that it's given by this expression. So one has to average this over Poisson distribution. So if you want to find population, uh, so sigma z basically describes the population in, in the qubit. In the qubit uh, so when uh, you can analyze this expression and average of uh, what a number of Poisson, Poisson distribution for that you can use actually settle point method and obtain uh, the following expression. And this expression can be when well understood because uh, it basically can, consists of two parts and two phases which determine uh, the dynamics. One of the phases is uh, this one. And due to this high photo number here, it has, uh, uh, it varies quickly and determines these quick oscillations. There is another phase, uh, this one, which just determines actually 
this kind of de decay of uh, envelope. So this phase, you, you see, it has this sine, uh, sine, sine uh, function here, and when this sine becomes a zero, when this becomes one, and we have a revival. So this is when uh, determined uh, uh, by by uh, by a longer time scale because you see we don't have here this quarter number. So this time scale is longer and determines this one. So the revival profiles uh, becomes actually broader. So because of existence of this factor, which makes uh, this prefactor in, in front of this sine square uh, smaller, and that leads to the broadening of uh, revival. Okay, these are known results, and we just wanted to see uh, the analog of this in our uh, concurrence uh, dynamics, and we can actually proceed in the same in a similar way and determine the corresponding expression for our density matrix and therefore our concurrence, for example, for zero zero. Uh, component of the density and <laughs> these expressions where these coefficients are approximately one half. We can we have analytic uh, results for that, but uh, one can also see for large photo number, we get here one half and one half, and one has, uh, we can basically describe the dynamics of this row zero zero also by such cosine function and proceeding in the same, analyzing them in the same way as in the paper of Eberly, we would also see uh, collapses and revivals in the dynamics. So that allowed us also to get uh, this analytical description, for example, for this uh, zero zero uh, element of the density matrix. And you see, if we have this exact numerical result and what follows from the saddle point approximation to this expression, and we have a very good understanding of these uh, collapses and uh, revivals. So basically, if you don't know about collapses and revivals, the physics of that is if you have very many contributions around one frequency, and these contributions different, are different by a small amount of frequency when they very quickly deface with respect to each other. But when uh, after a certain period, so that they, they can again reface and you will see a revival. So in this case, a little bit more complicated due to uh, uh, kind of broadening and decay, but that's uh, the physics of that, which we also understood for the system. And uh, therefore, we, we could also understand uh, the dynamics of concurrence in this thing. Um, yeah. So in fact, um, uh, this was kind of a, a first order effect uh, when we generate this coherent state. But we uh, can also consider a coherent pulse in which uh, this parameter, which determines the amplitude of a coherent state, vanishes. This actually determined by the pulse, uh, pulse shape. So and, and it is given by uh, by this integral, which is non-zero uh, for the case which we selected. However, we can also select a driving which would have a different shape, uh, looking like this. So you see, you kind of have this F zero, which is not really the envelope, but uh, kind of a, a yeah, modulation on top of this uh, of this uh, quick oscillations, uh, which would be which would be known, uh, which would be such that it's asymmetric in this case. This first integral over the field goes to zero. We shouldn't create any coherent uh, coherent state. And the question is, what happened in this case? If we have our system, we have our interaction, and uh, in some between qubit and the cavity, and we come come with such a short pulse which drives the cavity. So we look into this problem, and we have forward to solve it. We had to go actually to the next. Uh, order of the expansion in terms of the interaction. Um, this uh, expansion is kind of not very well known, and it's not coinciding with the second order of Magnus expansion. So the Magnus expansion actually uh, fails in this case. So, but uh, we can still treat this uh, problem appropriately analytically, understand what happens in this system. So what uh, happens in this system is actually the following uh, due to the interaction, so we have no Due to the shape of a pulse, we have no coherent amplitude generated in the cavity after the driving. But what happens due to the interaction, we kind of rotate qubits. Uh, so since we interact with a cavity mode, which we're driving, and uh, what happens just after the driving, we have qubits, which are somewhat excited in a way that we are uh, uh, rotated on the block sphere. And we can actually determine uh, <laughs> angle of rotation also analytically from the shape. Of a pulse, it's uh, given by uh, such expression, where um, 
uh, this parameter here is actually kind of a first moment uh, in, in the time domain if you integrate over the shape of the paths. You see this asymmetry here plays a role. So two asymmetric functions gives us here something symmetric and uh, we get non-zero contribution. So this also allows to create some excitation in the system and this is valid when this condition is fulfilled uh, on the strength of the field. And you see here, actually, this condition is also a validity condition for the previous approximation because this is just generally determined the perturbation scheme which we are using. So we can use both, both approximations when this uh, condition stay valid. So this, uh, after the driving, we still have a product state. Uh, so we create uh, uh, no, no entanglement. Uh, the number of quanta which we have driven uh, depends on the number of, of qubits and this angle. So number of qubits here is two. Uh, um, yeah, so that's an, an amount of uh, energy in terms of quanta which we have found. Okay, so this uh, then afterwards uh, leads also to generation of entanglement. So we uh, come to this unexcited system, drive it, create this rotation, the qubits interact with the carity, and uh, this leads uh, yeah, to the corresponding uh, dynamics of the uh, entanglement, which we can observe. So since we drive here not too strongly, uh, then uh, there are just a couple of frequencies which contribute uh, to this dynamics. We see with our analy analytical solution also well, works quite well to, to understand what happens numerically. Yeah, so we can use uh, some stronger driving. In this case, we, we, we try to see how much we can actually bring it up to, uh, to and there's some limitation, but still we can drive it stronger. And um, then also some more frequencies uh, would contribute and the deviations of analytical solution becomes more visible, although it still works quite well because the condition which was very still kind of satisfied quite well. Yeah, so for comparison we have, uh, to this, we, we studied also case by quasi-static driving to have a more complete uh, understanding of the system. So similar like what we had, but, but now we have our driving in which we have kind of a uh, static amplitude here. And this uh, solution of this problem is known, and one can find in, uh, in, in, in this book for n for number of qubits, for n qubits in the cavity. So what happens in this case, if we start from uh, undriven, uh, undriven system with uh, unexcited qubits and uh, a vacuum state for the cavity, then we uh, bring it finally to such a state where we have all qubits rotated by a certain angle. And when Oops. And the state of a cavity is actually in a so-called squeeze state. If you uh, plot it in the phase space, it has uh, the shame with some uncertainty reduced here for, for, in this case, for y quadrature. And there is a relation between this angle of rotation and the uh, uh, squeezing parameter of the cavity. This is the set is not what we did, so it was done in this work. And there is no entanglement in the system created. However, clearly, also after the excitation, after we instantly switch off this, uh, this pulse, the entanglement will be again generated in the system. So this, both excitations are connected with each other in this way, and also number of effective number of excitations or potents in the system can be also, average of that can be, can be found from this angle and squeezing parameter given by, by this equation. This is a known relation for between squeezing parameter and average photon number. Of a, uh, of a quantum light, and from that we can also find uh, the dynamics of the generated uh, concurrence, and in this case, naive concurrence, real concurrence, you have to cut at the zero, can, cannot be really smaller than zero. So naive concurrence is where I just not uh, cut at zero. So you see the maximum value here, we can achieve uh, also around one half, so, and can understand this uh, Dynamics, we, what we can also do, we can actually, after the exciting the system, we can use an ultra short pulse and to see just the effect of this crisp cavity on the uh, entanglement, we can switch off uh, the rotation by rotating it back to the, to the ground state using the short pulse as I described. And uh, when analyze which, con which concurrence is created by, by this state and uh, this is when also possible and we can see uh, yeah, these uh, results. So 
uh, the effect of rotation. So if we look more just like for a fixed uh, for fixed uh, drive, so we can analyze for, for kind of a weaker driving. And uh, this would be original key, what we create with, uh, with quasi-static driving. And uh, for comparison, so we have this case uh, where we have just, uh, we switched off excitation of a qubits and just left the squeeze state and we see we have some more, uh, 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 so less frequency contribute in this case with a somewhat less excitation. We can quite well understand this. And what interesting, uh, more interesting, so in comparison with uh, with this uh, additional excitation of the qubits, what is interesting is for the more stronger driving here, uh, but in this case, where we switch off uh, like kind of rotated back for the qubits, we kind of see dynamics of concurrence, which doesn't go to zero, but stays uh, above a certain level, which is also quite interesting why it happens and uh, not as usual goes to zero with some uh, uh, periodically. Okay, with that, I come to the conclusion of uh, my talk. So we see that the entanglement can be generated by exchanging one from classical pumping. So our contribution was here to consider uh, uh, basically these short pumpings. And this is maybe what might be interesting for experimentalists with whom we discuss uh, this uh, problem. So because this pumping is available in experiment. And we have studied, uh, yeah, so we see that the types of pumping in the system can be selected by pulse uh, shaping. And uh, high entanglement can be generated for a low number of quanta, which was kind of interesting and uh, non-vanishing, uh, okay, not interesting, but it was kind of expected, but non-vanishing concurrence from a strong coherent state is observed. This is a little bit less uh, intuitive because we have kind of a classical system which generates uh, an entanglement. An outlook, uh, yeah, so we want to understand better this non-vanishing concurrence from the strong again state and maybe design some other states uh, uh, classically, potentially, from which we, uh, excitation of a system from which we can get the concurrence closer to one. And uh, so you see all our operations uh, which we have produced on this uh, cavity qubit systems were local after just after the pulse. Uh, However, we can ask us the question, can a non-local operation be induced by the pulse for that? Actually, we have to go um, to the next order of approximation of a model uh, of this uh, um, unitary perturbation theory, which we applied, and see if we can actually generate uh, this uh, non-local operation already, already during the pulse. And with that, we might think about also generating Schrodinger cat states for a system and um, the squeezing which we generated uh, for the cavity due to the interaction with the qubits might be also observable in the short, uh, the short time scale. Yeah, finally, it was actually the real reason why we do all this stuff, at least from my point of view, maybe student has some other motivation, is uh, because we want to actually be able finally to trace entanglement uh, in uh, such systems on ultra short time scales, and we work with uh, uh, pulses of ultra short quantum light, which we think uh, would be useful tool to kind of monitor uh, such uh, things like entanglement on ultra short uh, time scale. Then we might also want to, of course, to generalize with therefore this uh, model to many qubits to study such effect like uh, super radiance and uh, yeah and. Uh, uh, also, for the entanglement, if you go beyond two, you also need some other measures. And there are recent interesting papers which uh, generalize uh, the entanglement from two based on mutual information concept. You can actually have the so called whole entanglement network, which generalize your, generalize your n qubit state. And we would be very interested to kind of dynamics we can induce in such systems and trace it afterwards. Uh, we find a short uh, slide. Okay, with that, I finish my talk and thank you. Questions? Uh, thank you, Andre. I uh, have several questions. The first one is how to exactly control a entanglement by classical light? Is it frequency of light which you change and then uh, what, what happens? So can you? somehow and waving the uh, describe what's going on. 
Hand waving claim, veil pops, waving claim was connected to each other. Can I have this more to where you can see all the time? Can, can see the slide? Uh, make this one. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So I think uh, this is um, <clears throat> basically in this uh, simple thing which you which you which you see here. So if you start from this, just the interaction brings you automatically to uh, entangled state. So after you trace out the cavity, you you, you have an entanglement. <laughs> then of course, if you have more qubits, like and more excitations, the, the whole zoo becomes more uh, more complicated. Yeah. So you have uh, you have uh, uh, these things. And for example, this state is not entangled. This is entangled. This is uh, non-entangled. So you see, actually, for larger Fox states, initially pumped. You have kind of in this subspace more states which are not entangled. They don't contribute to the entanglement. That's why actually the amplitude here becomes uh, small. So this you is involve when... more and more states by external power. Yeah, and and that's when also uh, when uh, not uh, so clear when so not so obvious for the coherent state, but actually where uh, this happens that uh, somehow uh, it's not like that. So for coherent state, at least you have this uh, concurrence equal to one half. And uh, this, even if you involve these more states and average number of photon is large, but you still uh, is able, you are still able to create uh, the entanglement. Yeah, and this is okay. No so, so uh, such a hand, hand waving uh, description of that uh, I don't, uh, I don't have. You see the, the uh, this description in terms of collapses and revivals and all the structure and averaging of. Uh, uh, of a photon number in the saddle point approximation is not uh, so absolutely clear. So we, yeah, maybe think more about this to, to have a more hand wave. Well, you it. don't have to have it, but sometimes seldom it happens that you have something. For example, for me, it's good enough to have uh, an increase of the states in the world by external light. This is good enough for me to even get some equation. But but for coherent state, uh, states would be involved, but still, uh, but still, <laughs> I agree with entanglement which is three. Okay, but still, you talked about measurement of uh, concurrence, entanglement, but for me, concurrence is something like vector potential, which everybody knows, but no one has seen. Them. So, uh, do you have some particular ideas how you can actually measure it? Or it's only indirect. So indirectly, of course, it uh, might be possible because uh, indirectly the concurrence would uh, uh, um, itself actually influence the dynamics of your density matrix in this uh, system, and indirectly you can somehow get some information on that uh, uh, if you try to measure it somehow indirectly. Directly, that's uh, exactly, exactly what we are thinking about. So if you use a prop light and you send it uh, onto qubits, the prop light would usually in transmission or reflection or absorption would uh, only react to populations of these two qubits. But this is for classical light. If you consider quantum light, this might couple also to such things like uh, concurrence. So this will be not uh, limited to just population of these two qubits. And this is our idea afterwards. We want to, to, want to use a quantum light. And when the absorption or if of transmission would depend on the concurrence in the system. So we were hoping to be able to trace it directly. In theory, in theory, because in practice, pulses of such quantum lights, uh, that is an additional problem how you generate. I think I'll, we'll have to stop the discussion here. We'll have to start time to move on to the next speaker. But let's thank the speaker once again.